Hello everyone, my name is Haley, and today in this video, we're going to walk through migrating the container registry from object storage metadata to database metadata. I'm going to be roughly following a guide that I'll link in the description. Before we get started, let's run through a few things. This migration process is available starting from GitLab 16.4 and higher. It's a beta feature. If you do want to run this migration yourself, be sure to create a backup of the registry's object storage. If you do migrate successfully, run with the database and find that for whatever reason it isn't for you, you'll need to take the registry offline, restore from the backup, disable the database before bringing the registry back online. It's not enough to simply disable the database in the registry configuration. All untagged images are automatically removed when, when running with the database. This is good. It's a key feature of the database metadata, but be sure that you cease running offline garbage collection if that's part of your maintenance routine. Be sure to update your workflows and documentation and look out for any cron jobs that might periodically schedule this automatically. The offline garbage collector is not compatible with the database metadata and can lead to data inconsistency if it's used after the migration. Let's talk about the state of the environment in this demo. This is an existing registry deployment. So we already have images pushed up to the registry object storage. This is not a guide for starting from a fresh install we have a database that's ready to accept new connections and is intended for the consumption of the registry. In the registry configuration, we have configured all of the connection information, but have left the database disabled. We'll come back more to this later in the video. We're also using a small amount of test data for this demonstration. Your import process will take longer than you see in this video. We're just using a small amount of data to walk through the steps without bloating the runtime of this video. Also, we're using the three-step import process, and this helps mitigate downtime at the cost of needing to do a bit more configuration and a bit more process. But ultimately, this is a good approach for registries that are very large or have very critical uptime needs. All right, throughout this video, I am just going to use some bash history to save me some typing, but I will go through what we are doing. So first, we're going to visit the GitLab configuration. And we're going to jump down to the container registry section. This is a pretty standard registry uh, configuration. So I'm going to gloss over most of it and only hit on the two sections that really interest us today. So the first is this storage section. And we're going to turn read-only mode on and off via setting this maintenance read-only enable flag true and false. It's false right now, which means we are in read-write mode, which is the standard operating mode for the registry. Next is the registry database section. The important thing for this guide is that we have enable set to false right now and that all of the connection information is correct. The tools that we use to migrate the database will reach from this configuration. So we know if these tools work, that we have configured this section properly, even before we turn enable to true and have the registry look at this configuration and start with the database.
Okay. So the first thing we need to do is to run the migrations for the registry. Okay, so this is an omnibus installation. So we're going to find the registry binary, and this is at op, GitLab, embedded bin registry. This is the same binary that runs the registry API, but we also put some tools here and ship it all as one thing. So we're going to use the database migrate up tool, and we're going to point this to the configuration, which is at bar opt GitLab registry config dot YML. These are the default values for these locations of the binary and the config. On your system, these may be different. So let's run our migrations. Note that you'll have to do this before running the latest version of each registry as you upgrade. You'll need to run this manually for now. So we are seeing that we are adding migrations or applying migrations rather, and that this was successful. If the configuration we put on the registry was false in some way, if it was incorrect, this command we could expect to fail if the connection information was not correct. So this is a good sign already. Next, we're going to go through and start running the actual steps of the registry in migration and import. So we are currently able to accept writes on the registry. And for the first of the three steps, we will be able to continue to accept writes and receive no downtime from this process. So we are actually going to keep the same binary, keep the same configuration file and change up the command a little bit. So rather than database migrate, we're gonna do database import and do step one, minus minus step dash one. And this is going to set us up for step two. When we run this, we're going to do as much of the migration as we can while still maintaining incoming writes during this process. For step two, we will need to take the registry into read-only mode. And then for step three, we can go back and receive writes. But we'll talk more about that during the steps. The text is a little large for this YouTube video for uh, the amount of uh, text that comes out of this uh, band, but we can see that we've completed and it took us about six seconds. So now we'll need to configure the registry to go to read only. And we'll do that with the GitLab configuration. So we're going to go down to the storage section, maintenance, storage, maintenance, read only, enabled, true. And then we're going to do GitLab, CTL, reconfigure. So step one has set us up for step two. Step two does need the registry to be read only, but it's going to take a bit of a, a quite a bit less time than step one. So let's see that now. Now there can be a little bit of a, a gap between step one and step two. Don't feel the need to uh, run them necessarily even the same day. But the fewer writes that come in between step one and step two, the quicker step two is able to run because it has less new data to deal with. So the registry has been configured for read only. 
now we'll run step two. And if you remember, the last step took around six seconds. So let's see how long this takes. Okay. Looks like that took about 0 0.3, 0 0.6 seconds, which is faster by my watch. So let's go in and reconfigure the registry once again. So now, not only do we no longer need to be in read only, so we'll disable read only by setting registry storage, maintenance, read only, enable to false. We'll also come down to the database section and enable it. So registry database, enable true, registry storage, maintenance, read only, enable false. And then we're going to do GitLab reconfigure one more time. Once the registry has come back up, it will be running with the database. And all API operations will now use the database. Now we have the last step, which can be run while the database is read-write. And that is just to make sure that all of the common blob storage of the registry is accounted for. So if you had any blobs that were ready to be garbage collected, steps one and two, just don't pick them up to expedite the process. Step three just goes through and ensures that the offline garbage, the online garbage collector rather can operate as it's expected to and fully see all of registry storage. So we have that. Again, this is a small amount of test data, but that's the import process and you should be ready to enjoy the new registry version. Thank you.